Hello, and thank you for watching this March 28th weather update, brought to you by Agribull, the makers of Morning Farm Report. My name is Eric Snodgrass, and I'm a senior atmospheric scientist and co-founder of Agribull. Well, last week's weather was punctuated by a powerful winter storm that took shape across the central United States. Very windy conditions on March 23rd prompted red flag warnings for a large region in the central U.S., warning of fire danger. Satellite imagery showed the sheer size of this mid-latitude cyclone that stretched from the front range of the Rockies to the Great Lakes and from the Canadian border into southern Texas. The winds within this system fueled big fires in Oklahoma and Kansas that produced smoke plumes that drifted hundreds of miles to the north. Interestingly enough, the local Nexrod radars were able to scan these smoke plumes, which showed up on our radar reflectivity maps. While they looked like storms, it was actually just smoke. Now, the much bigger story was the incredible snow that was falling from Colorado through Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The snow was so intense in Denver that the airport had to be shut down, which canceled thousands of flights. Heavy snow fell as the flow was directed up the slopes of the Front Range and blanketed parts of Colorado near Denver. What's interesting is that on Tuesday, before the system got there, a west wind raced down the Front Range, causing temperatures in Denver to top 70 degrees. Well then... Easter weekend saw the passage of a large cold front that dropped temperatures back toward values I would expect in early March. But March has been a very warm month. In fact, nearly all locations except for coastal Washington and Oregon have been warmer than average. Some places have averaged more than 8 degrees warmer than the mean temperature over the last 30 days. Well, don't get too used to this. Last week, a very fast pocket of air called a jet streak pushed through the base of a broad trough over China and Japan and headed across the Pacific Ocean. We need to care about events like these in the United States because we live in the westerly wind belt and our weather is therefore controlled by what happens to our west. Well, that jet streak is pushing a lot of warm air north over parts of Alaska and western Canada this week. When the atmosphere behaves this way during the colder months of the year, the displacement of the jet stream into a ridge over Alaska means that the central parts of North America will experience a deep trough in the flow of the jet stream. If you've been watching me much over the past several months, you will recall that ridges in the jet stream bring warmth to a region, while troughs bring cold. Well, here's the result. By the time that next week rolls around, we are expecting to see above average temperatures out west, with below average temperatures in the eastern half of the United States. This means there is potential for overnight temperatures to drop below freezing here for the first week of April. For most of the Corn Belt, we are still several days out from planting, but if you have flowers blooming, be sure to cover them up on the nights when the temperatures fall below 32 Fahrenheit for that first week of April. Since we're still several days away from planting for the Corn Belt, let's look for good field prep days for this week. Sunday's rain pushes east, and the next chance for significant rainfall accumulations look to be late Wednesday night into Thursday. A large low-pressure system forms in the Great Plains and is forecast to track through Iowa and Wisconsin by Thursday morning. This system will bring yet more rain to regions that are already very wet, like the southern Mississippi River Valley and the Delta. But before that next system arrives, Monday's high temperatures rebound across the central United States. On Tuesday, that warmth pushes a little east, allowing 60-degree temperatures to spread through a large part of the Corn Belt. And then Wednesday is warm too, as warm winds from the south spread 60s and even 70s across most of the Corn Belt. Even though this signifies that March will end on a warm note that it began more than four weeks ago, don't forget this pattern breaks down for the first week of April and cooler weather is on its way for the eastern half of the United States. Thankfully, though, Beyond that time period, temperatures moderate again as we prepare for the start of the 2016 growing season. Well, as always, we at Agri will bring you the latest and best weather forecast information through our morning farm report so that you can efficiently plan your operations. We thank you for your attention and hope you look forward to our next weather video update. Thank you.